Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 51. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. As of October 1st, 2024, the total cryptocurrency market capitalization is approximately $2.142 trillion, whereas the fair value logarithmic regression trend line fit to all data is saying that the fair value is at $2.997 trillion. This represents an undervaluation of approximately 28.51%. Now, as I've said before, the asset class can go through years of undervaluation and years of overvaluation. And clearly, you know, we've been in the cycle, the phase of the cycle where it's years of undervaluation so far. Um, but this is actually very familiar, right? We actually saw something very similar last cycle and the cycle before that. In fact, you can make comparisons to both cycles. Um, last cycle, for instance, we talked about this 2019 comparison where Bitcoin puts in lower lows and lower highs for you know at least six to nine months or so following the mid-cycle top when gold breaks out and when USDT dominance hits its long-term trend line. Typically, it goes overvalued and then it just kind of, well, typically it happened once before, right? But it went overvalued and then it came back to being undervalued, which is basically what we've seen happen again. Now, eventually, we did get a hard landing last cycle, um, and it's hard to know yet exactly if and when that's going to occur this cycle, but that is how, you know, that's how the cycle played out. But what I'd really like to focus on is, you know, and, and we've talked about this before, this phase of the cycle here back in 2019, right, this is where there was this rotation of capital from altcoins to Bitcoin. When the asset class goes overvalued durably, usually after QE returns and looser monetary policy, which we're in the process of getting, that's when there is a rotation out of Bitcoin into altcoins. Now, I think a lot of people are getting really frustrated with the altcoin market because they keep thinking like alt season is here and that it's just around the corner and I, they keep getting disappointed, right? But we must remember that there are certain mechanics in the cryptoverse that play out just like traditional markets have. And historically speaking, you know, as long as rates are high and QT continues, there's going to be a flight to safety. And within the asset class, that safety represents Bitcoin. Okay. Now, I think there's going to be a rotation out of that trade starting in 2025. But this whole rally we saw is very similar to the one in 2019. And then it wasn't really until after about 75 basis points of rate cuts that the market really started to move again. Yes, we had a hard landing and we got more rate cuts, but the market really started to move after the 75 basis points of rate cuts. So far, we've had 50. Well, the terminal rate's a lot lower. Um, but right now, again, the asset class is still below the fair value by about 28.51%. Now, you should know that we've seen this before as well. In 2016, right, you can also look at, there's 2019, you can also look at 2016. The asset class actually stayed below the fair value until April of 2017, right? So even throughout all of 2015, through most of 2015 and through, through, through 2016, and even the early part of 2017, the asset class stayed below the fair value. And you could argue that it might do the same thing again, where it just stays below the fair value longer than people really want it to. Um, and so one of the things we can do, a couple things we can, first of all, we can overlay, say, like the summary risk onto this chart. And I always think it's a, a little bit interesting to look at it and, and see, you know, kind of where, where these different risk levels line up, right? If you were to look at, at zero to point two risk. And let me get rid of the uh, total market cap line. Right? If you look at 0 to 0 0.2 risk, you can see where that occurs on the chart. If you look at 0.8 to 1 risk, you can see where that occurs, right? Now, that doesn't mean that everything has to only go up or only go down when it hits certain points. Some of the times, altcoins will make new lows, like some of them are, even if Bitcoin is still well off of its low. And it's just because Bitcoin is, frankly, a better asset. Um, than the altcoin market. 
but there's the reverse can also be true, right? Near near the tail end of bull markets, when you're you know when you're way back into being overvalued, a lot of times the altcoin market can continue running for a couple months, even after or a couple weeks to a couple months, even after Bitcoin has has topped. But I think this is always an interesting way to view the market. Now, one of the things that I like to do is I, I like to take the percent difference between the total market cap and the fair value, right? Because when you do that, you get a chart that looks like this. And it clearly shows us how the asset class goes from overvalued to undervalued. And what's interesting is that last cycle, the most undervalued the asset class got was in the halving year. March of the halving year. Now, the thing we have to remember, though, is that the fair value is a monotonically increasing function, right? So that would explain the question you should be asking is to how are we more undervalued in March of 2020 when the asset class at that time put in a higher low, right? I mean, if you go look at, at total market cap, um, you can take a look at, at, at total market cap at the time, the asset class put in a higher low in March of 2020, right? Let's go take a look. So you can see right here, March of 2020, the asset class put in a, a higher low, right? Right here. But somehow it was more undervalued. The reason is because the fair value is different, right? The fair value in, in March of 2020 was, you know, $284 billion. Whereas the fair value in December of 2018 was like 128 billion. So that was why it was more undervalued, even though the total market cap was actually at a, at a higher level, right? Total market cap was actually at, at, a, at a higher level in March of 2020, but because the fair value had gone up, it made it a much more attractive trade. In fact, you could argue that buying total market here is even better than doing it down here. Now, why is that, right? Well, look what came next, right? I mean, you know, this is this is a much more impressive rally than what we got over here. There's also opportunity costs, right? I mean, you know, if you held from December 2018 until March of 2020, you, you didn't really make a whole lot of money, right? If you didn't take any profits up there. Um, and I imagine during that time, there were other asset classes that fared a lot better, right? I'm sure the S&P uh, you know, and some of the asset classes were actually doing quite a bit better from December 2018 until March of 2020 uh, than, than the total market cap did. Um, but, you know, with that said, with that said, I, I do think it is, you know, you have to remind yourself of, of how the, the mechanics work and how you can go to those undervaluation, that undervaluation territory, even if it's a higher low and it still be more undervalued than it was previously. So this time... You know, in October of 2023, it was more undervalued than in December of 2022 because the fair value had gone up. And if the asset class were to go back down to the levels in, you know, a year ago, right, a year ago in terms of undervaluation, that would actually still be a higher low as far as total market cap is concerned. So I hope that makes sense. Um, but I did just want to highlight this because we, we saw a very similar move last cycle where it came down. Got a, got a big uh, bounce into overvaluation territory, and then it gave it all back. Um, and then we, we popped back up and got a hard landing, and then we got our QE bull market, you know, after QE returned, after low interest rates returned. So we saw it happen last cycle. We also saw it happen two cycles before that, right? Overvaluation, and then come back down, okay? Um, so basically, 2012 and 2019 even look somewhat similar in terms of going undervalued. Uh, overvalued and then being back to undervalued for a while, even going back up to the fair value, tagging it and then selling off again, right? And then the market durably went up. So, I mean, it's interesting, right? It's certainly interesting to follow and it's interesting to follow that rotation of, of capital. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the, the asset class is basically playing out how it always does, um, where, you know, you, you have your bear market year where the asset class transitions from being overvalued to undervalued, right? You can see it in 2014, in 2018, and in 2022. And then 
at the end of the bear market year and the post and the and the pre having year the asset class stays undervalued for the most part except for maybe popping up above it a little bit but not really durably going above it and then the more durable rally above the fair value historically doesn't occur until the very end of the having year or the post having year right last cycle we went durably overvalued by the end of the having year okay but the cycle before that it wasn't until you know for the first or second quarter of 2017 the cycle before that it wasn't until the first quarter of 2013 so again we might experience a a market that doesn't durably go overvalued until potentially next year and if it did that it wouldn't really be out of the ordinary it would actually still be in line with what we saw the cycles do previously. So I, I just wanted to, you know, to reiterate that over the long haul, obviously, I mean, I still do think cryptocurrency will grow as an asset class. It doesn't mean you're not going to be undervalued for a while. It doesn't mean you're not going to be overvalued for a while. Um, but I ultimately do think that it will head to approximately 10 trillion as the asset class grows and matures, plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder, what's a few trillion dollars among fronts?